Well, guys, we are back for another episode of the Liberal Asshole Show, episode 67, and the first episode of the new year. So, what are today's topics? McCarthy is embarrassed at being House Speaker, Vosch getting cancelled for being correct, California's blood helping drought, Brazil's for January 6th, Trump threatens third party run, NFL player nearly dying in game, and millennials aren't becoming conservative. So, what do you want to talk about first? Let's start with McCarthy, because this was absolutely hysterical. And the left also humiliated themselves too. So, of course, yeah, if we all remember. Also showed that, um, but in the process, they also showed that the squad are also corporate Democrats, so. And, of course, yeah. Wash, Sam Cedar, and um, David Dole had a meltdown over being proven wrong, too. Yeah. <laughs> but, anyways, we're getting to the point. So, of course, recently. He was, more, he was annoyed. He was more annoyed, but not like raging he he doesn't he doesn't seem like the he's not the raging type who like you can tell when he's annoyed but not like he doesn't get like shouty in that like borscht does so anyways i was trying to say but, yeah, recently, agent recently of course with the midterms republicans won the house and because of that we had to have a new house speaker since pelosi doesn't have the vote plus she was retiring thank god so kevin mccarthy was trying to become the new speaker and he had his own force to vote moment, where I think up to 20 House Republicans voted against him over a dozen times, and he was prevented from getting a House Speaker for the longest time since I think before the Civil War. This is the longest time we had a House Speaker vote all the way up to before the Civil War. So we're talking about 160 years in the past. And of course, <laughs> he was completely humiliated for the entire thing because this is like almost never happens, especially for this long. Like as much as we hate Pelosi, she got her um, votes every single time the first round, all that. But him, yeah. he couldn't get this soon. Oh God! So he was humiliated, <laughs> and the reason why they voted against him first time is because they wanted concessions and all that. And of course, <clears throat> he conceded to pretty much all of them. To get his vote. Yep. Now, of course, as I point out to a lot of people, Harry, too, because he actually believes this. Don't believe McCarthy when he says this. You know he could just be lying to get the votes. Like, we, I always tell people about Pelosi. And he'll, probably, and he'll probably use that to get back. And he'll probably, it's definitely at some point, get back at, um, at those who went against him. Yeah. Like, like, one of the things that was brought up, which... Sounds too good to be true. Is one of the things he could see it on was cutting the mil U.S. military budget by seventy-five billion, bu seventy-five billion, which is yeah, no, awesome. That's not happening. Yeah, I don't believe it. Although that would be awesome, I don't believe it. Plus, from what I heard, I got a f funny feeling from what I've read up that a lot of money might be instead cut from instead of like the budget, they would cut funding to Ukraine, which is no, of just course. no. No, cut the military budget, but leave. but keep giving Ukraine fun, I mean weapons and all that to help fight off their invasion. So of course, even if they do something right, which I don't believe, they're going to go at the wrong direction. And of course, all the other concessions are going to be things that are horrible ideas. So that's not good at all. But of course, so first we got to see about him getting humiliated in all this. It proves that the squad of corporate Democrats that need to be voted out. And also shows that forced to vote does work. The like, only question would be, the only thing is I'd say that on could have been done on something else, like maybe weed legalization or something else. But of course, like, the problem with um, Medicare for All is that in the House... There were, they would have only needed, there would have been a hundred and, only had like a hundred and four Democrats that actually agreed to support that, and the rest would likely still oppose it, so it wouldn't stand a chance. But if we can get something that would have been more likely to pass, it would have been a win. But of course, you can also use it to humiliate and embarrass the rest of them who vote against you, remember? Just like Pelosi. Yep. Just like, that, you, yeah, yeah. like, can you imagine if they actually did force a vote and made Pelosi forced to have that long of a struggle to get the House Speakership, how much it would humiliate her, just like it did for McCarthy? Oh, God, yes. It would be then awesome. There are people like Harry who are like, the only, Harry, we originally, uh, they were like, because the, the squad didn't push force the vote and, com and completely shut Congress down until they got literally our entire 
and the entire leftist agenda through, we must now vote Republican. And that is what needs to be done. We must shut down everything until they concede on every single issue. They have yep. to be forced they, to they, surrender. They, 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 no, no, no. You know what? Let's go. No, we're going to take it. How do you think we should go? Like, literally shut down every single function of the government until they literally leave Congress and allow the progressives to run, to that would, run everything. That would be even more based. But yeah, <laughs> so we no. got, of course, got to say, oh, and of course, the um, force the vote thing came up again after all these years. And of course, yep. all the most stupidest people on the left. The Young Turks, Vosh, Sam Cedar, yep. um, David Dole, and all of them completely yep. humiliated themselves once again, saying that this would not work, even though the evidence shows it did. And it and, them. And of it course, for the Republicans. And of course, as I'm sure you know is too, they sure keep like bringing up Jimmy Dore a lot as their argument. Hmm. It's as though that's the only reason you're against it. Like Vosh admitted when he was on Chris and Colin Friends, oh, remember? Um, That's pathetic. There are other things. Like Sam's also got the strate uh, strategic aspect. I think mean, he's like force the vote could, but not on, um, but not in the way Dor suggested. Uh, he's uh, he was looking at it from a different perspective. Still wrong, but <laughs> but of course, sort of like not as wrong as the old as the old neoliberals and the CIA agent Borsch. <laughs> but remember that Dor's also that. My conspiracy theory is that Vosh and Dor are both CIA agents, so... <laughs> and they're both very dumb. Like, come on, guys. We don't really like Dor either, but when he says something right, we're going to acknowledge when he's right. It's called being nuanced and objective. Exactly. You can't yeah. let your hatred of someone blind you if they do something right. Like, we don't like the Republicans, and pretty much every single concession they got, we probably disagree with on every single of them, but they were still right to do it to get concessions from their perspective. And it yep. fucking worked. So to all of you that are against force the vote, you need to just take the L and admit you're wrong. It wasn't a bad idea. It's nothing but positive yep. if we did it. McCarthy was humiliated, Pelosi would have been humiliated. We wouldn't face a backlash, she would, just like he did. It's not that hard to understand. Yep. So, of course... Like I said, I don't know, all the concessions are probably dog shit except that military one, but I don't believe that's going to happen. Of course, it sounds like more of it would be towards Ukraine, which is not good. But yeah, mm. so we got to see about the whole thing. The Carpy humiliated, anti-force the squad idiots humiliated, and all that. And, and, and don't forget the squad proven to be corporate Democrats, and that's why we need to get rid of them. And too weak. Yeah, well, they're corporate Democrats, so the, the being too weak goes with it. I have some backbone, which the Republicans, yep. unfortunately, are more willing to do so. All right. Yep. So I think we talked enough about that. So what's next? Borsch getting canceled for being correct. And, of course, here's something else we just mentioned about if you don't like someone, you still got to support them if they do something right. Well, this is another yep. circumstance. Vosh is correct for once, and we don't like him on this show. So recently, over the last few weeks or so, he's been going on a tangent about how a lot of the left really just have a massive problem with men. And you know what? He is 100% correct. Have you... Like, I cannot stand how much the left has a problem with men. And I'm sure you've seen it too, especially in his audience. And this came up about, um... Voss point out, like, the way you guys treat, like, men's issues empowers people like Andrew Tate and all those idiots. Yeah. Because you smugly and condescendingly dismiss men's issues and assume that every single person who's for M uh, men's rights are all like violent misogynistic incels and all of them and other stupid mm -hmm. crap like that you just cave the entire argument to them on the alt right and all yeah, that exactly. like men's rights are a thing and also you should support them also as a feminist too because there are a lot of men's yeah. issues that affect feminists too and it also fights against toxic mascul masculinity, which is a thing, too. So, yeah, we got to see about this whole entire fiasco that the left can't admit that there's many problems on the left that they just can't acknowledge they have a problem with men. And also, not only that, yeah. too, they have a problem with whites, too. Mm -hmm. Do I need to remind you all? Um, I think it was early this year when Vosh had to deal with the idiots that support, like, land back. 
Remember that stupid professor woman yeah. that wouldn't admit it, she wouldn't say it, but she pretty much implied that she thinks that all whites in America should be kicked out of the country and should all the land given back to blacks and Native Americans, even though blacks weren't from here either. So why are they allowed to keep the land that's not theirs either? <laughs> Yeah. Like, you got to concede on this, people. There's just men on the left that are just racist and misandrous against whites mm. and men. And they need to be they need to be cut off the community. And you need to talk about men's issues, which we do a lot, too. Like, yeah. conscription, loneliness, toxic masculinity. There's men in, this, and men in the world face the same social issues that women face, too, in other ways, too. And double stance, too, in that regard as well. Like, remember how, like, women are supposed to stay home and be moms, all that. Men are expected, of course, to protect women at all costs, fight for their country, yeah. even if they don't want to, do work, go to work, even if they don't want to, and can't show their emotions or anything like that. All these things affect men, too. But the right, left never talks about because fuck men, and the right talks about to exploit them to say fuck women. Yep. So yeah, we gotta see about this crap. Annoying, like, very annoying. Like, like Bush, no, Bush is, uh, Bush is right. Oh, the, uh, you've seen the tweets. Yes. Yeah. So you know that what he was mentioning. You saw the original tweet was was about. So yeah, it's. I just wish that would actually go that. These sort of things were talked about fairer. And like it, um, like some people, some of them on the left actually like, seem to be glad that there's a resurgence of this in cell ideology because it confirms their, um, their, um, pre existing biases against men. So, yeah, it's now, of course. Annoying. And another thing, too, is there are many people on the left that do talk about men's issues that actually have a brain. Vosh, Kyle somewhat, mm -hmm. Hunter Avalone, who talks about it all the time, and he gets shit for it on idiots on Twitter all the time, and he eviscerates them. It's so hilarious watching it. <laughs> and there's another leftist that won't come to my head who covers it for some reason, but there are many on the left who do talk about this. So yeah. don't assume that the left never talk about men's issues. We do. But it's also true that there are a lot that just smugly dismiss them. Oh, I know a very good example of this a long time ago. I'm sure you know Matt Bender, right? The name vaguely rings a bell. He used to be on the Majority yeah. Report. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Do you know I don't like him? Yeah. And you know why I don't like him? Why? Because a few years ago when he used to be on the Majority Report before he left, this was like back in like 2014 or 15 or so, he did a video talking about, like, men's rights. He was I think he was talking about some idiot, like, far-right MRA person, stuff like that. He was making fun of them and all that. But then, in the middle of the video, he went on to make fun of, like, men's rights as an issue entirety. And all of them were just, oh, like, whiny, Lord. crying man babies and stuff like that. They have no issues. It was, like, the one only video on Majority Report I ever disliked because it was so bad. And I've never liked him ever since for it because it was so disgusting what he said. It was, like, overwhelmingly disliked. And it's shit like that that I'm talking about. <laughs> reminds, me of, um, reminds me of Steve Shives. Oh, man, you're going to get blocked yeah. for that one. Ah! <laughs> nah, nah I've, I've, I've blocked him on I've blocked him on Twitter first. As soon as I got the account, there was about four or five accounts that I just blocked immediately. And Steve was one of them. This like, guy had been blocked a long time ago and I never even talked to him before. <laughs> All because I follow TJ. That was awesome. I remember yeah. that name. So, yeah. What do you guys say about that? Like I said about Bender. A couple of them were, it's one of those things, and it's just, it's pretty typical. Like, there are men's right MRA people that are really stupid, and are just deep down like far right massages, but that doesn't mean yep. men's rights are not something that should be, like, made fun of. There are very important issues, just like there are a bunch of stupid radical feminists that we've made fun of the show, but that doesn't mean feminism and women's rights are to be, like, mocked and make fun of. They're important, too. Full things are important. Everything should be talked about. And stop this demonization of white men on the left. It's pathetic. Yep. Exactly. Right. So now, on to the next topic. 
That would be California's flood helping drought. This is this is weird to say too because it's not very good. So recently, over the last few like two weeks after Christmas or so, California's experienced. I'm sure a lot of the West Coast is having this too because this is their wet season. If you don't know, from like yeah. the fall to like the spring, the West Coast, unlike you or I who probably have like set seasons. They have actual wet and dry seasons on the West Coast. Like, during the spring and summer, it's dry, yeah, that's fall like, and winter. Um, Northern Australia, Queensland, New Northern Territory, and parts of Western Australia have only a wet and dry season. The tropical parts. Yep. Yeah, I'm sure. But I'm sure, like, where you're at, it's more, like, tempered, like, the same all time like it is for us. Like, um, do you get, like, the same amount of rain? But Darwin, it, Darwin, it kind of is. Um, at least in temperature, it stays pretty consistent, but not so much for um, Brisbane. It's quite a variant. So Brisbane's a fair way south of Darwin. So, like us, usually on the Mid Atlantic, we pretty much get rain like consistently all year round. Although in my experience, especially living on the east coast of Maryland, more we seem to get more rain in like September and October and all that. But we still get rain uh, all all the time, all around. Whereas like California and all of them. They like getting like no rain in the spring and summer, and then they get their rain fall and winter. So, so California. Well, of course, that's basically, that's basically what happens in the um, Northern Territory. That's basically what happens there. What? Um, not so much in Queensland and um, but the northern parts of Western Australia because they get hit with cyclones. Yeah. But yeah, they um, they they don't yeah they don't get much in um. Uh, Northern Territory and Northern Western Australia, they don't get much in um, in the dry se They get very little in the dry season, and they get an absolute crap ton in winter. But yeah, Queensland, it's a bit more... Uh, you go north of about Townsville, I'd say, and it, go, and it trends toward, more towards the tropical line, while south around Brisbane, it's more typical. Did you say Townsville? Yes. So you're saying the Powerpuff Girls are down there with you? <laughs> yeah. Based on, yeah, it's based in that area. But anyways, California, of course, has had massive amounts of rain over the last few weeks. I've seen, I, I have to look up the CNN report I just saw written down earlier, if I could find it. But they got... A shit ton of rain recently. I think I read up on a CNN article. They got like up to 30 feet of rain in a lot of parts in the last few weeks. Which is unbelievable. So it's causing major flooding. Which is not good because remember, California has been having severe drought. Not just California, the whole entire like West Coast and the Southwest has had severe droughts over the last like decade or so. And you know what happens when like drought stricken ground has all of a sudden a shit ton of rain on it yeah they don't hold the water well so that causes not only runaway floods but landslides which california being a very mountainous like state has that a lot so you gotta watch out for that if you're out there because it's very dangerous and of course flooding is not very good whatsoever but according to the cnn article this really has helped a lot in ending a good chunk of their drought although if they said too it's going to take a massive amount of like oversaturation went um wet seasons in order to really fix it. But here's what it says. But for the past for three years, California has been in a desperate need of rain. Years of unfavorable precipitation trends and more intense heat waves have led directly to the state's unrelenting historical drought that's triggered dire water shortages, which not just California, but all the West Coast has had to deal with, especially like Nevada too, like where the Hoover Dam is, their Lake Mead or I think it was has suffered massive shortages too. But the past several weeks of rain has and snow has significantly reduced the state's drought intensity, according to the U.S. Drought Monitor. Extreme drought, the second highest designation on the drought monitor scale, has nearly disappeared. Like, I read up before, it was like 27% of the state had the worst drought rain. Now, like a few weeks later, it's like less than a third percent. So yeah, I'll think of that. 27% of the state was under the worst drought rate, and now it's only a third of a percent. That's a massive and needed change. That's huge over a span of a few weeks. And then um, the other, the next one, has been reduced by, I think, like 40%. Like, here's a pitch to show it. This is pictures from Jan December 27th to January 10th, I believe it was, in California. Look at that. 
Far out. Massive. Dude, that's the sort of drought conditions you'd see in Australia. Well, yeah, California is very dry, remember? Except during this time of year. So, yeah, you know this feeling a lot, probably, because you're probably experiencing the yeah. same thing. So, yeah, this has massively helped. And from what I've read up, they've gotten, I think it says in this article, that they've gotten somewhere between this winter alone, their wet season, over 120 to 200% more rain than they normally get, which is huge. And, yeah. um, yeah. Oh, I know, that's Nevada. I'm trying to find... And another thing, too, is it's also producing a lot of snow in, like, the mountainous parts of California, which is also very neat because, for all of you don't know, snow is very important, especially in our mountainous areas because what happens is when the spring comes, that snow would melt and funnel into rivers that f- supply all the reservoirs throughout the land with fresh water and all that. But because of yeah. climate change... There's not enough snow accumulating in the mountains anymore, and therefore, it's causing them to go dry. That's what's happened in Italy over the last few years. We covered that during the European heat wave last year. And there's also going to be a major problem in the future with the um, Tibetan mountains, which funnel into India. And that's like a billion people that need that water. But because of climate change, they're not going to get it, probably. Remember that um, California's not the only place. It's just been flooded. Um... For about two months of the year, um, Australia had an inland sea in New South Wales and Queensland and Victoria. Germany did too last now, year. Now, um, parts of my home state are being flooded because of all the um, because the Murray River is Murray Darling River, so um, is carrying so much water that it's flooding. And they're having to build levees right down the um, sides of it so that it doesn't um, flood like. The half of the half of the Riverland. And remember, Germany also experienced major flooding last year yep. during the, the um, heat wave. And remember, Bangladesh had a cyclone that hit them. Not Bangladesh, yep. Pakistan. That thing flooded like a third of the entire country. Yes, it I was remember insane. that. So yeah, this is all, of course, due to climate change. And of course, this is also causing extremes in both ends. So California and the West Coast, while they're also experiencing severe droughts. It's also possible that they're going to also experience severe major rainstorms now over the years where it's going to produce severe flooding. So you're going to experience both. And of course, since they don't have the infrastructure and since the ground's too damn too dry to set to accept I mean um, absorb the water, it's just going to run off into the um, Pacific when we need to keep it in the state and also expand out to Nevada because they need that water badly too. Cause that because of Colorado River f- supplies water for pretty much all the West Coast. So that's finally need to build up the infrastructure there. And also, I just looked up too, it's um, this massive rainstorm also severely helped a ma- prevent a mass dying off of trees in this California too, which is also very important too. So let's see. As of Wednesday, this lake was 40% of its total capacity, up from 11% where it was last year. Nice. But short of its historical average of seventy two percent. So yeah, the fl- so the floods, ironically, are also being very good, but also very bad at the same time. So we gotta see about yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like that sounds about right. Up, right with the latest na- La Nina. Uh, yep. Wait. Oh, wait. Was it La Nana now? La Nina, like the La Nina has died, died off now. El, but yeah, was that period where um all of that went? El Nino or La Nana is in effect. La Nina is in effect. El Nino is the one that um affects you would, uh, would send um yeah because sent Australia's um temperatures high and drying everything. Yeah, whereas when we get La Nana, hurricanes are more frequent for us on the East Coast, which is not fun to deal with. So yeah, so yeah, it's pretty bad. When one flips around, you and me have horrible experiences. Yep. <laughs> all right, so, yep. In the end, this all boils down to climate change, and we must combat to prevent it from being worse. But, of course, you got to do stuff, peoples. And the governments, too. All right, yeah. so, on to the next topic. That would be Brazil's January 6th. And, of course... As I'm not surprised that this would happen. So, of course, remember back in October, Lula won the presidential election, kicking Bolsonaro out, and he became president on January 1st, with at first looked like no problem whatsoever. But, of course, 
a week later, I think it was on the 8th, just like with um, America two years ago, idiotic Bolsonaro supporters raided, I guess, Brazil's equivalent to their Capitol building, and they yep. pretty much did the exact same shit. Now, there are some differences, though. One, I've read up that they've pretty much suppressed it. Have you read that up? Yes, I read that. Do you know if anyone died, like what happened here? Not as far as I know. And um, another difference from what I heard, I Chris, where I heard somewhere that the I think it was the governor of the state that this happened on was suspended by their Supreme Court, like basically kicked oh. out of office for not like having enough security or whatever. So that's pretty insane and awesome. And I, and I also think that governor was also a Bolsonaro supporter. So gee, I'm not surprised why there would be no security. Hmm. Yeah, no surprise. So, another weird thing is, Bolsonaro was not in Brazil at the time when this happened. He was in Florida. He was in Florida, yeah. Which is, I find, a little weird. Why are you in Florida, Bolsonaro? That's a little strange. Like, why are you in America instead of in Brazil? But it also probably <laughs> means he had no involvement whatsoever in the coup. It was just his supporters being stupid. Whereas, unlike Trump, who did outright instigate January 6th. Although mm -hmm. Bolsonaro also is not fully absolved because he did the same crap that he denied the election results if he lost. He just didn't go as extreme as Trump and just, like, gave up, basically. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Lula, still yeah. president. Hopefully he can implement all the progressive policies Brazil needs without the idiotic supporters stopping him. And maybe if Brazil can get, at, can get through this, honestly, probably... Maybe even better results than America did, and Brazil's a shithole compared, unlike America. And that was the big concern leading up to if Lula did win, if Bolsonaro would try and do some military coup, because Brazil has history of that, unlike America. So that would be more yeah. likely to succeed, unlike here. But thankfully, that haven't, and seems that this failed as well. So we gotta see about that. Good to know. It really is good to know. And so, all you uh, idiotic Bolsonaro supporters, shut the fuck up and accept that Lula won and eat dick. Yep. All right, so I guess on to the next topic. That would be Trump threatens a third-party run. And we mentioned this, too, in the last episode, and literally right after the episode ended, Kyle posted this video where Trump already has threatened a third-party run if he doesn't get the Republican nomination, because that's what we've been saying the last, like, two months about worrying about DeSantis running for the Republican nomination. So let's watch Kyle's video. I have quite a story here for everybody. Uh, it's something that we've been speculating for a while is the case, but now we have you know, some degree of verification. This is in Mediaite. Trump appears to threaten third party run to split Republican party in half. 100% base. Okay, here we go. Former President yep. Donald Trump appeared to wink and nod at a third party run in 2024 by sharing on his Truth Social an article arguing for, GO for the GOP to split in half. Trump shared the article titled, The Coming Split, it's not very subtle, without comment on Wednesday night, but many pundits and observers were quick to take notice as Trump remains the ostensible leader of the Republican Party. At this point, honestly, that's debatable because he has a, there was one poll that had him at a 30% approval rating, which is the lowest that uh, I've seen. I honestly don't ever. believe that poll. What about you? Because Trumpsters really, 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 really like Trump, so I find it a little hard to believe. What about you? Yeah, Panda did. Politics. And then there was one that just came out this week, which I think was a more reputable polling outlet, and it had him at 31%. So it's, like, consistent now that he's really low in the polls, and, uh, you know, DeSantis is now beating him in maybe half or maybe even a majority of the polls in a, you know, head-to-head -head matchup. Uh, so... I wonder if that's people that would support him and not necessarily people that like him or not, because, like I said, I don't find... It, I find it very hard to believe that Trump supporters don't like Trump anymore, but supporting DeSantis more, that seems... A bit more reasonable because that has happened as we saw over yep. the last few months where DeSantis is now yep. leading a lot of the polls, even with people that say mm -hmm. like Trump still. He shared the article from, I think it's called American Greatness website. It's basically like a MAGA pro Trump website. Like that's their whole point in existing. Uh, they continue here in media and say the article published in the right wing pro Trump website, American Greatness, argues, quote, What should we do when a majority of Republicans want Trump, but the Republican Party says we can't have him? Now, by the way, well, they did that in 2016 and they lost and Trump won. So it doesn't matter if the Republican establishment won. It's the voters that want him. They're going to put him in if they so want to. There's nothing they can do about that unless they want to, you know, 
cheat. That is not what the majority of the Republican Party says. Again, I just told you, 30, 30% approval rating, 31% approval rating. And even in polls where he's winning, he usually has a plurality, but not a majority. Okay. So yeah, the polls sound like it's more of who they would vote for, not necessarily if they like him or not. The article by yeah. Dan Galertner, Galertner leans in heavily on the debunked allegations that the 2020 presidential election was stolen, of course, because that's literally all Trump thinks about and talks about and apparently reads about. And that's what's going to cost um, him if he does run. They state stole the presidency from him. Yep. Quote, the Republican machine has no intention of letting us choose Trump again. He is not a uniparty team player. They'd rather lose an election to the Democrats, their brothers in crime, than win with Trump. Okay, I think that is totally bogus. That's totally not true because they've fallen in line behind Trump 412 times. Which what they they've did. noticed now is that he's a fucking loser. Lost in 2018 in the midterms, lost in 2020 in his election, lost in 2022 again in midterms. So he's a loser. So yes, the Republican establishment is trying to get past him. The reason why they're doing that is because they want to fucking win. But likewise, if he did get the, nom <clears throat> get the nomination, they are going to suck up to him and support him no matter what, as they always did. Yep. Quote, that oh, leads cool. us to the inevitable question, what should we do when a majority of Republicans want Trump? They don't. But the Republican Party says we can't have him. Do we knuckle under and vote for Ron DeSantis because he would be vastly better than any Democrat? The author asked before concluding, I say no. Why, though? DeSantis is pretty much Trump policy-wise, except he's not as hated. So if you really care about the policies, you should want DeSantis. He has a better chance to win. Like, that makes no sense. Oh. That's what, we, that's what I've been saying about, like, if AOC and Bernie run. I would want, I would support Bernie because he has the better chance to win than AOC, even though policy-wise they're the same. It's just weird. Oh, exactly. this is getting interesting. I say no. We don't knuckle under. And I like it, DeSantis. I vote for him after Trump's second term, but not before. Uh, <laughs> Why, though? The then goes yeah. on to again claim that's Trump is weird. beloved by the everyday GOP voter and that the establishment is suppressing him. The RNC can pretend Trump isn't loved by the base anymore, that he doesn't have packed rallies everywhere he goes, but I'm not buying it. Talk to Republican voters anywhere outside the Beltway, and it is obvious that he is admired and even loved by those who consider them. I mean, we've seen videos over the last, like, two months or so after the midterms, and yeah, Trump still is liked by the Republican base. But there are also a lot of them that say they would probably vote for DeSantis more because he has the better chance to win. See, yeah. they're thinking about the policies... All you hardcore Trumps are just thinking about the character and personality that you can't just let go of Trump instead of thinking of the policies, which DeSantis will give you what you want and has a better chance to win. So if you're smart, if you really care about the policies, you should support DeSantis over Trump any day. Themselves ordinary Americans. Um, notably, a quick scan through Galer Galerner, I don't know why I struggle with this guy's name so much, articles reveals many of these claim these types of claims, like this one from a post midterm article claiming that both the twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty two elections were stolen. Of course. Anytime Trump's candidate shit the bed, which is virtually every time since twenty sixteen, oh no, it's fake bros, totally totally made up. Stolen. Of course it was only a feeling, but I noticed it was shared by a surprising number of people in deep blue Connecticut. Okay. So now this guy's saying Bro, he's even gonna win in Connecticut. He he would win in Connecticut if it was a fair. <laughs> oh my God! Reminds me of Tim Pool saying Trump was gonna win like every single state. Come yeah, on, yeah, don't I be remember, stupid. I remember Sargon, I remember Sargon of Akkad um said that he was gonna win all fifty states plus Greenland. <laughs> oh my God! What a fucking idiot! Come on. Come on, you Trumpsters. You know damn well he's not going to win these deep blue states. No Republican is going to do it anytime soon. Just like no Democrat's going to win those deep red states anytime soon. Just accept the reality. If you win, it's going to be a close election. It's not going to be a blowout. It's not that hard to understand. Fight. I mean, this is beyond comical. Enthusiasm for Trump 2020 had run higher than for any presidential candidate people could remember. Higher than it had for Obama the first time around, and it was all just a... And yeah, but a lot more people hated Trump more than liked him, so they voted against him. Biden got 8 million more votes, so deal with it. Raj. So while this guy sees unprecedented levels of support for Trump in Connecticut, of all places, he does come down to earth a bit and offer a prediction for how a third party run by Trump would end. Quote, do I think Trump can win as a third party candidate? No. I would vote for him as a third party candidate. Yes. Because I'm not interested in propping up this corrupt gravy train any longer. Galerner concludes in the article Trump shared, Quote, Mitch McConnell says that providing assistance for the Ukrainians to defeat the Russians is the number one priority for the United States right now. Quote 
I don't believe McConnell because I don't trust Republicans at all in this issue. But yeah, that is a big priority. Ukraine should get all the weapons he needs. But of course, a lot of you on the right are against it. According to most Republicans, most Republicans where? Inside his bank account? Galertner adds, repeating the rhetoric on the far... But it also is true the majority of Republicans still still support Ukraine. So that's also true as well. Uh, so all you that are against it on the right, you're a minority and eventually you're going to have to just accept that reality. Right, regarding exactly. the Russian invasion of Ukraine. On that point, look, he's actually correct on that. The idea that you're average American on the right or the left is like, thing number one is we must give Ukraine another $40 billion. That's just not true, okay? And he, it's some, and it's up there, though. People are themselves if they think, like, yeah, that's number one on the list for the American people? No, it would be the economy, jobs, healthcare, wages. It's still going to be up there though, Kyle. Um, it certainly is not. Let's make, let's uh, send billions more to Ukraine. You can have whatever opinion you'd like on that issue specifically, but to pretend it's number one is ridiculous. Anyway, look, the thing that's interesting about this is they're kind of like shades of the Bernie or bus types in 2016 and in 2020. Um, but the difference is, and this is an important difference, right? Agree or disagree with the Bernie or bus types. The reason why they wouldn't bend the knee to uh, Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden like me. was much more principled than what these goobers are talking about. Because they wouldn't bend the knee because they say, look. Yeah, like me. I was a Bernie or Buster both times. Didn't vote for Hillary or yeah. Biden. I voted for a Green Party candidate. And of course, I'm in a deep blue state, so it doesn't matter. Even though I had to deal with a whole bunch of idiots on the left during those two elections that a acted like, oh, Maryland's going to go to Trump if I don't vote for Hillary or Biden. Absolutely stupid. And I got so much crap North, for North it. North Maryland specifically. I got shit for it even though I said I was in a deep blue state, funny enough, like I said. They acted like Maryland was going to go to Republicans if I didn't vote for them. Like, I was the sign factor. But yeah, I support Bernie or Bust because I support the policies. These people that are doing their own version of Bernie or Bust, they support it because they just like Trump more than the policies. Because remember... If you care about the policies first and foremost, you support DeSantis no matter what because he has the better chance to win and he agrees with you on all the policies. I don't think Joe Biden or Hillary Clinton is going to give us universal health care. I don't think they're going to exactly. do a living wage. I don't think they're going to end the wars. You know, I don't think they're going to eliminate student loan debt. And so they say, look, you're not hitting like any of my core concerns, any of my main policy Exactly, priorities. and that's why I didn't so, vote for And a lot of the Bernie or Bust types would admit, and I think this is correct to admit, no, of course, Hillary is a lesser evil. Joe Biden is a lesser evil than, than Trump or whatever generic Republican, right? Not but much, The, the yeah. principled stance they took was, if I don't think you're going to hit any of my core policy beliefs, then, yeah, maybe I'm not going to bend the knee. Maybe I'm not going to get involved in politics. Maybe I'm going to sit this one out. And again, Exactly. Could, I got called a fascist for it, too. <laughs> to agree or disagree with that approach. Fascists for supporting the corporate demon rats. Ooh. Bosch would love to call me that, remember? But that was where they <laughs> were yes, coming because, from. That yes, was the because Bosch with like with, um, like with Dora, they CIA agents. And he loves calling everyone a fascist, remember? That's yep. <laughs> Trump. There is no, even like, though he's, more, well, even though he's, he's closer to a fascist than anyone else. X, Y, and Z, and establishment Republican X or Ron DeSantis is not. No, this has nothing to do with policy. This is literally all just a cult of personality. This is all like they've rented their brains out to Trump and they believe in him like he's an emperor god king. And so even if DeSantis, and by the way, he would, if DeSantis did every single thing Trump would do, same policy agenda, which is the case, that is what would happen. They're like, no, I don't care. I still want Trump first. So it's more like, it, I view this reaction as more like of a babyish reaction than the Bernie or Bust types. Again, you can agree or disagree with the Bernie or Bust types, um, but I, I understood their reasoning. I understood the logic of where they were coming from. I don't understand this at all. If DeSantis or Mitt Romney or any Republican is effectively going to govern the same, and by the way, I think all the evidence in the world says they do, they would. Even Liz Cheney, who shits on Trump 24-7, voted with Trump like 92 or 95% of the time. There is no yep. fundamental difference. But with these guys, it's not about policy. They don't care about policy. It has nothing at all to do with policy. And that's all they care about. Me. But I will say, final point is, let him fight. Hell Let yeah. Him fight. Because look. Yeah. So what are the most likely scenarios? Let them fight and destroy each other. Yay. Okay. Let's Ooh, run through this. Kill most each likely other. Literally. One, Trump wins the uh, primary. Okay. Um, I think he would win with a plurality. I don't, I don't think he would be a majority if he were to win. Um, but then he's very likely to lose the general. Because he just... Which it is the case right now. If it's him and Biden, it, the polls show Biden would win probably even more comfortably than last time against Trump. 
So that's the problem. If Trump wins, he's more likely to lose. Self siloed himself. That, that made no sense. <laughs> he siloed himself off from like normal politics and normal people, and he's hanging out with Pizzagate types and QAnon types. So he can't win in general. He's so he's talking about terminating the Constitution and can't shut up about the choice. Oh yeah, he mentioned that a few weeks ago too, which we should have covered too. He doesn't support the Constitution anymore. Hmm. No. You. Constitution-loving conservatives want to support him after he said that, pretty much? Hmm. Yeah. So even if he wins the primary, he's not... I don't think he's going to win the general. I mean, I'll give him, a, like, a 1% chance, right? That's one scenario for the Republican Party. Another scenario is DeSantis wins, and DeSantis could beat a Democrat in the general election. And I think polls show that he actually does lead by right now, so that's the scary thing. DeSantis could actually win. But there's a big but, though, with it, though, which Kyle's going to probably get to. In um, 2024. Yeah. But, but... What happens if DeSantis wins? Does Trump go silently into the night? And Is support he, DeSantis? endorsing DeSantis. I think that'd be totally off the table if, if Trump loses to DeSantis. Is he even going to do the thing of like, I'm just going to back off here and not say anything and just let this guy do it? Of course no, I not. Think so. I think the more likely That's scenario is he would run as an independent in the general. And then you would definitely split the Republican vote. Um, so you'd split the right-wing vote. I think you'd get, in a scenario like that, Trump would get maybe 12%, anywhere from 12% to 20% of the vote in a general election. DeSantis would get more than that, but the Democrat would waltz into office because they would crush in the- Yeah, that's the problem though with you guys. For you Republicans in 2024 with Trump and DeSantis, you're kind of in a loss no matter what the moment. Trump can't that win the way. general, and if DeSantis gets the nomination, he could win the general, but then Trump is gonna be a baby and tank DeSantis and allow us on the left to hopefully win. So it's like a lose-lose yeah. no matter what for you right now until you tell Trump to shut the fuck up, college and crush which he's not going to do. Now split the right-wing vote. So that's all possible. Another possibility is that, like, Trump croaks or Biden croaks or whatever. But um, right now there is no winning for them. They're, they're really caught between a rock and a hard place for the, the Republican Party. And this, this article really cements it, that now, now Trump is floating it and the implication here, the underlying threat here is, if anybody else other than me wins, it's a wrap for you fuckers. Like, I'm coming after you. It's over. It's done. Like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not taking no for an answer here. And again, I say, let him fight. Hell yeah. Again, it's just funny that... Absolutely. Woo the the let them sweep in each other. On the but of course, left, we, we need to get a progressive like, power that way we can waltz in. on the Democratic side. It always came down Just to politics. It was always like, you guys what actually aren't trying to fix this country because you're corrupt and you're bought and you're neoliberal corporatists and we hate that and so we're not going to suck it up. Like, that was the fight. It was like the social democrats and democratic socialists and even people to the left of that versus like the centrist uh, neoliberal corporate democrats, right? Like, that was the fight. It was substantive. This is not substantive. This is like, I need my cult leader even if the next guy is more electable and he's going to do the same things, I don't care. I don't want him. All right, man. They are self-destructing, and uh, frankly, you love to see it. Absolutely. So, yeah. Exactly. What do you guys love say it, about love that? It, love it. Oh, I love it. Let him fight. Let him fight. Let him fight. So, like we said, you, got, you Republicans are in a bad spot right now. Either Trump wins the nomination and he might lose... Or, DeSantis gets a nomination, he could win, but Trump will fuck him over, so they both lose. And us on the left would win. So, maybe you should have eventually put in Trump back in 2016, since we told you all this was going to be happening pretty much, but you chose not to listen. He's a selfish man-child. Always remember that. Alright, so now, on to the next topic. That would be NFL player nearly dies in game. So yeah, this happened last, back on January 2nd, Monday night. It was the Bills at the Bengals. And early in the first quarter of the game, DeMar Hanley, who's a safety for the Bills, after making a tackle, he collapsed on the field. If you never saw video on that, because, you know, we caught it. Yeah, it was, that was crazy. So yeah, he had a cardiac arrest, unfortunately. Probably from the tackle. And... Now, we've had pretty bad injuries in the NFL where they've had to take players out on carts, stretchers, ambulances even. But we have I've never seen this in the NFL before where a player had to have CPR done on them on the field. It was unbelievable. So, thankfully, he's recovered, although his season's done pretty much, unfortunately, for him. Yeah. 
and it sucks too because the Bills were in the playoffs, so they probably couldn't need him. So yeah, that was an unfortunate thing. And I hate to be the bear of bad news, but like for all of you wondering, oh god, we could have had our first NFL player die during a game. I hate to break the news to you, but that's actually happened before in 1971 with a Lions receiver who had a heart attack near the end of the game and just collapsed on the field the exact same way. So, mm. it's not the first time an NFL player died on a field, and I'm sure it won't be the last. Hopefully, it's the last. And, of course, I'm sure we all know there's probably yeah. players that have died playing sports, too. I know an MLB player died back in, like, the 1910s when a baseball hit him in the head when he couldn't see it. It was at night and all that. And, of course, we know motorsports drivers have died, too, which yep. is unfortunate. Yep. So, yeah. yeah. It's... Hold on. I want to fix something. And, of course, um, so, of course, the game right. got canceled, and it was yep. declared a no contest. So, everyone else played 17 games except the Bills and Bengals, who played 16. Now, the problem, too, with this was the Bills and Bengals, these were two teams in the playoffs fighting for the number one seed in the playoffs. This isn't like... Ooh. Yeah, like it was a setup right now because right at that point in the week it was either going to be the Bills, Bengals, or Chiefs getting the number one seed possibly. Whoever won that game and then won the next week and the Chiefs lost, they would get the number one seed. If Bengals beat the Bills, won the game against the Ravens, Chiefs lost, they get the number one seed. If Bills went out because they have the tiebreaker over both teams in this scenario, they would have number one seed. So this game was very important to determine who's going to get the number one seed. And of course, they never finished it. So that caused a massive change where now home the AFC Championship, the game before the Super Bowl, if it's Bills and Chiefs, since the Bengals couldn't get number one seed anymore with the Chiefs win, it's going to be a neutral site. It's going to be in Atlanta instead of in Kansas City, which uh -huh. it would have been. Since, like I said, oh, if the... Oh, yeah, also, yeah, also, just a separate note. For um, cricket, when um, Philip Hughes died, he got hit in the head by a cricket ball. That was in 2014. Unfortunate. And I know... I read while I was looking up something like this happened to him. I know I think it was a um, Swedish soccer player had a heart attack on the field last two years ago or so, lead up to the Qatar World Cup. So yeah, it's unfortunate, very common thing. I mean, not very common, but it's unfortunate it happens. So yeah, much to my annoyance because I really think they should have finished the game because that's just too big of a playoff scene to just cancel the game outright. So, yeah, we got to see about this situation. Oh, oh, my God. And, of course, when this happened, you had so many idiots on Twitter yep, that yep, kept trying to vaccines. say, that, yeah, that, yep, that kept trying to say that remember, this is because of the, the COVID vaccination. Like, shut the fuck up. You don't even know if he's remember, even vaccinated. Every, remember, nobody can die, uh, can die of anything anymore except the vaccine, according to um, anti-vaxxers. Yeah. Only... The vaccine is the cause of death now, according to them. Except we don't even know if he was even vaccinated. Because even though the NFL and does have... Remember, there's a good chance he was infected as well. And that can, and that can lead to complications as well. Yeah, but we, like, we don't know the situation with his health other than him, maybe, or his doctors. So why are you bringing up the COVID vaccine and your anti-vax crap? Just shut because the fuck every, up. Because they have to every single time someone hits trouble. They have to be like, the, the vaccine caused it. The vaccine caused it is the only way you can die now. Absolutely stupid and disgusting. So yeah, yeah what do you guys see about this situation? Like, how do you think the NFL handled it? Oh, that that'd be really hard because that's like because uh, from what I heard and read, it was like the exact wrong spot in the exact wrong moment. Which is it's always oh, like the non it's always the non bad looking things that always cause the problems. Just like Dale yeah. Earnhardt when he died, his yeah, crash. Yeah, Dale Earnhardt Senior. Yeah, because yeah, I've seen I've watched all like his crashes in the nineties when I watched like NASCAR tapes of like massive crashes. He's been in way worse looking scary crashes. Than that, yeah. yet he Come died on. from it. What happened to Mar Hanley? Yeah. That looked like a normal ass tackle, nothing wrong with it, and then this happened to him. It's always like the non, like bad looking things that always seems to cause the trouble. Yep. So yeah, at least he's recovering off. But we gotta see about like what the NFL did when it came to the playoffs, canceling the game and then doing net new, neutral site AFC Championship. Feels weird. Definitely not a fan of it whatsoever. And if the Chiefs did lose. To the Raiders the last week, it would have made it even more complicated because they would have basically had all three of them if they played in the AFC Championship on neutral site. But now it's only Bills and Chiefs that they have it. Mm -hmm. and it, it feels wrong. 
like it screws over the Bills because if they won, they if they beat if they finished the game and they beat the Bengals, they would have gotten home field advantage instead of the Chiefs. If the Bengals won, and then the Ravens and they beat the Ravens, which they did, they could have gotten a number two seed. And if the Chiefs lost, they would have gotten home field advantage. And then the Ravens, if they beat the Bengals and the Bengals lost to the Bills, the Ravens could have gotten the AFC North and the Bengals would have been a wild card team instead. Like, it basically fucked yep. up three teams and a lot of the Chiefs just easily get home field advantage, which they honestly need because the Bills and Bengals beat the Chiefs this year. And that home field advantage is going to be really important for them, even if it's going to be a neutral site. So they kind of like basically fucked over free teams and helped the Chiefs for it. It just feels really wrong about it. They really should have just tried to finish the game and it would have been much better. Yep. So yeah, we got to see about this whole thing. Oh, and oh my God, too. Oh my God. All the people have been shitting on the NFL like hardcore, like the sport is like violent and needs to be banned and all that. Oh God, I can't stand these people. This shit can happen anywhere. Like, these cardiac arrests could even happen, like, to you or me right now, just out of nowhere. Shit just happens like that. It has nothing to do necessarily with the NFL. It's not, like, the leading cause of it. Like, come on. Oh, my God. Absolutely stupid. So, yeah, we got to see about this. Um, just an yeah, un- there's not really much I can say. Just an unfortunate incident, just like what happened to the Lions receiver back in 1971. It's just a freak accident. Mm-hmm. Shit just happens. That doesn't mean that the COVID vaccine did anything to do with it. Especially since you don't know if he was vaccinated or not. This doesn't mean that the NFL is a violent sport that, like, needs to be banned or anything like that. Especially since, like I said, it was a normal, standard-ass tackle. Didn't seem anything wrong with it whatsoever. Oh, my God. So, yeah. It's unfortunate, but hey, I can't wait to see the playoffs tomorrow and see how much that would be affected by it. All right, so I guess we're finally on to the next topic. Millennials are not becoming conservative. So, of course, I'm sure you've heard this for your entire life. When you get older, you'll become conservative, right? Because I heard it all the time, especially from my maternal grandparents. Because I was such a crazy far lefty back when I was like a teenager and all that. So, of course, the standard view is that when you get older, your generation gets older, you all start becoming more conservative. You're liberal when you're young, conservative when you're older. And historically, that was the case with the silent generation, boomers, and Gen X. But millennials, the upcoming one, because millennials, the oldest members, would be 42 right now. So we're getting up yeah. there in age. Not only are we not becoming more conservative, according to the stats, we're actually becoming even more lib- left-wing. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Unlike the other generation, which kept going up and up. And we know why it's the case, but let's watch Kyle's video on it. So this is some really interesting data from uh, Financial Times. <clears throat> Excuse me. And for some reason, this applies to the UK and America for some reason. But I'm yep. sure this is the case most of the West Side world. I'm sure if we saw polls down where yep. you're at, it would probably be the exact same thing. Jim yeah. Barrett says... Yeah, the Greens just had their best ever... Um, they're, our, they're our left-wing party... The Greens actually had the best election, federally, that they ever had. And I'm sure the conservatives down there are having a violent meltdown over it. (laughs) Maybe not violent, not like a totally violent one. Are they mauled in like maniacs? (laughs) Oh, they were were coping. (laughs) Are they coping as much as the midterms here were? (laughs) Probably. Good, keep going. Millennials aren't getting more right wing as they age. Fascinating statistics. So here, let me click this graph for you. I'll give you guys a, a better look at it. I don't know if this is a better look. It's actually probably a worse look. But anyway, um, you can see the chart here. They have what they call a national average for ideology. And um, as boomers got older, as the silent generation got older, and even as Gen X got older, they've become more and more conservative. Here you have... What's really weird is it kind of flips for boomers in the UK and America. In the UK, boomers all of a sudden are even more conservative than the silent generation was, their parents now. But for Americans, that's not the case. The silent generation is still more conservative. Like, boomers in the UK skyrocketed. I think in one of them, it's um, part... It's like... They, they've been thinking about, the fasc- about fascism, but the boomer generation... Turns out they kind of like fa- turns out they kind of like fascism. 
especially in the UK. And even their, yeah. um, actually their, um, according to this, Gen X, which is from 1965 to 1980, in the UK, they became more liberal at first, but then they became more like the national average. Whereas Americans, that trend was a lot more less, and now they're more conservative on average. So Gen X in the UK were more liberal than cons- than America's. Meanwhile, millennials, oh boy, has it really gone down. The UK is even more, their millennials are more liberal than Americans by like 20 points. Uh, uh, Republican vote share by age within each generation relative to national average. So silent generation has gotten way more conservative. By the way, uh, it's going to be annoying when they start bitching that Social Security and Medicare was cut, given that they're voting for the people who are going to destroy Social Security and Medicare. Which uh, is always hilarious. Up, Gen X going up as well. Millennials have, if anything, gone in the other direction. Yeah, look so at that, guys. Millennials in American UK have become more left-wing as they got older. It's completely yeah. flipped. And just wait till we get to Gen Z when they start voting a lot more often. <laughs> yeah. Remember when Trump won and all the idiots on the right kept saying that Gen Z is going to be the most conservative generation ever without backing up any yeah. evidence to say otherwise? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, thanks to Gen Z, the Democrats still maintain the House, I mean the Senate because of it, and lost in the blow of the House because they vote like for Democrats by like thirty points. I think it was more than Republicans. So, mm. are not because there's an old adage, right? How does it go? Um, if you're not a liberal when you're young, you have no heart. If you're not a conservative when you're old, you have no brain. Of course, that mm-hmm. you know, right winger came up with that, and. That's how they conceptualize the world. Like, oh, young people mean well, but they're idiots. And so when they want to help people, <laughs> how dumb to help people. You should be an asshole to people. <laughs> and so the idea was, and data for a long time bore this out, that the older you get, the more conservative you get. Um, the more because you sort of, I guess the argument more is... more racist you get, and the more you want to hmm. want to kill people. Since I'm sure you, I'm you're... Sure. Are both your parents boomers? Um... Like mine are. I wonder if that's the case for you. Do you notice your parents being more conservative? Uh, dad, is, dad, dad is. Mum isn't. My dad's um straddling the border between baby and Gen X, and my mum's an early Gen X. Uh, my mum's apolitical, and not really with my dad. Like my dad's a little. My he's moved a little bit, but he's still like he's still center. But, um, he's still... But he's going the wrong direction, though? Mm, not really. No, not really. Um, but, like, it, it, like, he's staying... It's just that the a lot of the... Like, he actually said, initially, early on, he was a voter of the Liberals. He would switch between Liberals and um, Labour. But, mm-hmm. since the Libs have... Well, since everyone's gone to the right, except the right, in the last 30 years... He's now finding himself voting Labour and Greens. Base. It's not that like he's gone left. It's that everyone else has gone right. Based. So yeah, like, my parents are kind of like flipped. My dad's becoming more like right wing slowly over time. Whereas my mom became a hardcore Bernie bro over the last few years. Oh. While also being a dem loyalist, which is cringe. So she's mm. like, so she's both. You sort of can make a lane for yourself in the world, and since you've made a lane for yourself, you've sort of made peace with the system as it is, and so then you have a vested interest in defending that system, in keeping that system and the status quo the same, or relatively similar. Um, But here's the thing, and this is why this conversation about millennials is is interesting to me. Also Gen X, me Gen Z too. Millennials don't have a piece of the pie. And that's the reason why... Millennials are way more left wing and not get becoming conservative as we get older, because economically we're worse off, whereas the older generations are much better off, and therefore they don't want to implement the policies that we want that would make us b- be better off. And for Gen Z too, forget it, right? Like the Zoomers are, are going to have just issues that are just as bad, if not worse, than the Millennials. Um, we've seen those charts, right? I don't, I didn't pull one up for the purposes of this this talk here, but. You have boomers hold, like, some ridiculous percentage of the national wealth. I think it's, like, 60-plus percent. And millennials, it's, like, less than 10 percent. And 
Yeah, when you're in a situation... When the wealthy have that much um, of the national wealth, it's just economically disastrous. They need to have a much lower share of the pie for it to be much better yeah. off. Where? Just like how it was... Bef I can't remember what number it was, but during the Great Depression, it was very high. But then, like, after World War II, the um, Golden Age for America, the sh percentage of the wealthy owned the wealth of the country massively shrunk. But now, it's pretty much back to where it was bef during the Great Depression, about the same exact same number, which is disastrous. You're sort of yeah. fucked. You're treading water. You realize the system is bullshit. You're generally going to have the disposition of... We should change this system for the better. That's going to be your take. Your take is going to be, well, this shit ain't working, so we got to do something. So you're not going to want to defend hierarchy because you think the hierarchy is bullshit. You're not going to want to defend tradition because you think the tradition is bullshit. And yeah, and that's another reason, too, why us are becoming more yeah. left-wing. We don't like that you guys are fucking authoritarian social retards. Like, abortion should be allowed gay rights and trans rights that should be allowed and respected and all that and you guys are fundamentally against all those things and like i said before that's also a big reason why people become less religious that was the main reason why i'm also an atheist because of the rights treatment of gays growing up Shit. you're gonna say no i'm in favor of change and in many instances radical change and so yeah when you have a generation that doesn't have the same opportunities as the previous generation and by the way nobody Nobody argues against that, right? Nobody says, actually, yeah, you do. You do have the same opportunities as the previous generation. There, there was data that came out on um, what they call social mobility, which is economic mobility. And what they learned is the American dream is more alive and well in Canada than it is in America. So it's much harder now than it was for, you know, our parents' generation to climb the economic ladder. Some people I just can't conceive of ever buying a home and, and, and a car you know, paying a mortgage, it... Because they're just too expensive. People are fucked, man. This gig economy is... They're too expensive, fat. and we're paid way too low. That's just the reality of yeah. it. You see, you know, wages have effectively been stagnant since the 1980s. If the minimum, as we said before, if the minimum wage kept up with inflation and productivity since 1968, the minimum wage would be like 20 bucks right now. But, yeah. nas but nationally, it's still 750 some states and places, of course, have raised it. Like in Maryland, like three more years, supposed to be 15 bucks, but it's still too low. It needs to be that much money we need to be making in order to make it off just fine. We're being underpaid and things are just way too expensive. And if you want things to change, then you must force the changes to happen. You must lower their costs and you must raise our wages. Otherwise, no change is going to happen and we're going to stay left wing, so deal with it. So we are we're moving in the wrong direction. What this neoliberal corporate era ha has given us is a system that's biased in favor of the wealthy and well-connected, the billionaires and corporations, the executives. And, you know, you have skyrocketing income and wealth inequality. This is all... Like, well, I don't know about your parents, especially down there, but, like, my parents, they grew up in the golden age of American economics. That's why I, we're better off than probably a lot of others, even though we're struggling. Because we had all that jump, they had that big jump start, whereas we do well, not. Worn out by all mm -hmm. of the facts. And so, of course, that younger generation is going to say, for the love of God, you get like one thing that you guys could do to help us out is eliminate student loan debt, right? Joe Biden reduced some of it. There should be no student loan debt, period. College should be free, end yep, of discussion, exactly. and shut up and accept it. And Democrats yep. got rewarded in the midterms. And Democrats did way better in the midterm than anybody thought. Why? Because it was a little bit of help. A little bit of help to, to working, generally young people, but even some older people. And, you know, and now the court's going to block that. It looks like they're about to block that. And so, yeah, people can't get a fucking break. Their politics is based around, hey, I don't have a fair shot. This isn't a meritocracy. And so for the love yeah. of God, give me a fair shot. Let's make it more of a meritocracy. You got to get this fucking crazy student loan debt off of my back. I can't Progressive policies are pro-capitalism, as much as you don't like to admit, you conservatives. Our policies would actually make capitalism much better off and sustainable, whereas you guys make it unsustainable. So, and guess what? It, yeah, does, uh, it also look, is the unsustainable. It sucks that the reason why they lean more left is because they're struggling, but it is good that they lean left. Because the mentality of the older generations is apparently, hey, I got mine. 
So fuck off for you. As long as I got mine, I'm gonna walk over the bridge and then burn it behind me. That's apparently their mindset. Yep. I would like to think that, you know, no matter what, reasonable, rational, intelligent, sympathetic, empathetic people can look at others struggling and say, let's try to ameliorate that a little bit. But the right do not care. Some generations do not believe so. Not the right so anyway, that. We'll see what happens with Zoomers eventually with this stuff, but millennials are not becoming more conservative. If anything, they're going further left. Um, that is the case with Gen Z as well. Thing. Now it's just a matter of yeah. actually forcing change, which is very difficult in a system as corrupt as ours. But, you know, the way the current system is going, it feels like it can't hold because it's not secure, man. Eventually, we're going to gain power and there's nothing you can it do is. about and it. That's, you're seeing yep. that bubbling We're starting up to become an age where we can get Brexit into office in now. Or Trump getting elected here. You know, people are either going to turn far right or far left. And uh, let's hope they choose the better one of those two options. If you want to see me but and that Crystal requires Bo a brain. So, yeah, we got to see about to, to no surprise. Us millennials are becoming more left-wing as we get older. Mm -hmm. Not surprised at all, and I guess you're not either. Exactly. And we got to say about all the idiots on the right are probably stunned Pikachu-faced about this. Well, of course. Of course they're like that. So like yeah, their, their, their ideology. They hate the, They hate you if you're young. They hate you if you're poor. They hate you if you're a minority, etc. etc. I hate you if you're not exactly like them, and they want you to die. But yeah, here's murder you if they had the if they the, if they were allowed to. So yeah, if for all of you that want maybe, um, the left and not be at, I mean millennials to not be as left wing. Here's what you're gonna have to do. You have to cave into all of our demands. Economically yep. and socially, you must surrender on every single thing. We want abortion to be legal. You're going to shut up and not oppose it. We want gays and trans rights to be legal and respected. You're going to shut the fuck up and you're going to accept that. And we want the economics to fundamentally change like that. Like, no more student loan debt. Stu I mean, college should be free. Shut the fuck up and accept it. The minimum wage needs to be raised. You're going to shut the fuck up and you're going to accept it. Taxes need to be raised on a wealthy and to the point where if you make a billion dollars, you should get 100% tax on that from the rest of onward. Exactly. You're going to shut the fuck yep. up and you're going to accept 100%. it. 100%. Yep. One billion dollars or above for 100% marginal tax rate. Corporations need to be heavily restricted. Capitalism needs to be um, regulated. You're going to shut the fuck up and you're going to accept it. And yes, some things need to be socialism in this country. And you're going to shut yep. the fuck up and you're going to accept it. That's final and that's the end of it. Now, I hope you understand that and accept it. All yeah. right. So, I think we finally covered all the topics. And how about that? In only an hour so, too. Went by very quick. All right. So, I think we're going to wrap the episode up here. So, see you guys next time for episode 68. Um